for contemporary writing and production major, uh, we use the word writing to refer an umbrella term for several things that require skills in composition, orchestration, and arranging. So our students do also these three things. Um, so when, when we approach writing, that's when we, that we hope that our students take a look at all of the different skills, uh, writing melodies, compiling with harmony, the whole process of writing which encompasses from having that first initial idea to give it shape, orchestrated, and also ultimately arranged. So that's what the courses in the major also focus on, these three components. And what we do specifically in the major is that our writing classes are oriented towards providing a diverse, stylistically diverse of styles and ensembles. And that is one of some things I think makes us unique. But and regarding the type of media that our students write for, it can be any media. And in fact, we provide students opportunities to write for a lot of instrumental music that happens in a concert environment, like a live performance situation, but also recorded media. Our students also record the projects a lot. We also work with vocalists and songs, but I would say it's a lot of instrumentals and vocals and advertisement, uh, short form media, um, not like long movies, but short form media and, and media in general. So that's plenty. Thank you. Um, for us with writing, and because we're a little bit more specific with jazz composition, uh, we're leaning towards that particular genre. However, the question nowadays is what is jazz? And um, I found that uh, what we try to encourage our students to do is uh, to think of where they're coming from and perhaps to apply jazz elements to their writing. Um, it is a little bit more of, it's one of the original majors at the school. Uh, we have a very comprehensive uh, curriculum though and compared to, I wanna say like other institutions and uh, and so in terms of the writing part of it, uh, we go through tune writing, writing for um, small ensembles, large ensembles. We even dive into what we call chamber jazz. That can be argued as to what that exactly means. Uh, but even to the point of having it be like an acapella type of ensemble uh, and also mixed um, instruments. You know, we've, we've had students be creative. Uh, I had a student who was a violinist she did a quartet with rhythm section, and it was a, it's quite amazing kind of a thing. So we're very open minded in terms of the type of ensembles or instrumentation. For the most part, it is tends to be um, live musicians. But nowadays, uh, even in our concert that we recently had, and one of the faculty um, members came in and brought a launch pad and was sampling um, at the same time with live musicians. So we're always looking to explore um, anything and everything that we have around here and, um, and as i mentioned it, the idea here is also kind of a con continuity of um, continuation of the harmony courses that we have here so and in combination with um, orchestration and arranging um, type of courses and uh, as far as who do we write for um, we will write for as, as many people as we possibly can uh, we have some student groups we also have students that put their own groups together um, and we also have the possibility of having a recital um, as part of your portfolio and um, yeah so it's a uh, it's definitely an exploration into more um, getting a little bit more in depth into like long compositions and short ones and so just trying to cover the level thing. For professional music art department is interdisciplinary, so our students are able to take courses from across the college through what are called tracks. So a student could choose a track in contemporary writing and production and music production or contemporary writing and production and music business and be able to take some courses, a, a, a very specified uh, choice of courses that are listed on the berkeley.edu web page for professional music so you can go look at your track page see what the optional courses are and you're able to pick up to 16 credits to go into your concentrate uh which is now called a track 
and you just have to uh, you have to have a minimum of three courses from each track for it to be considered a track course uh, a, a track an official track so if you decided to do um, music business and songwriting you would have to pick um, three songwriting courses and three music business courses then you can do additional songwriting courses if you if that's what you chose and you could also of course use your general electives as an uh you know another option to extend your study um so for composition um what does writing mean for your department uh writing is inherently a creative act and uh so in the composition department we focus on uh, training students on the fundamentals, harmony, counterpoint, orchestration, analysis, on learning about what's happening in music today, contemporary music, what's happening at uh, Lincoln Center and so forth, and also developing your own individual voice as a composer, whatever that may be, whatever you want it to be. And so what does writing mean? We come out of a more, you know, writing for orchestra, writing for chamber music, writing for voice, uh, writing for solo instruments. Um, but we kind of want to see you do that in your own way. So bring in all the influences that you have that you want to kind of synthesize and develop on your own. That might be multimedia, that might be working with electronics, that might be long form, you know, symphonies or whatever the, the case may be. Um, so that's kind of where we're at, we're writing for mostly acoustic instruments, but we do have a few courses in electroacoustic music, which is combining electronics with acoustic instruments, either with live processing or some sort of playback. Um, and we also encourage bringing in improvisation, bringing in performance, the performing composer uh, to blend those, those skills. We wanna see you um, use your all of your skills in your compositional endeavors. Well, what writing means for songwriting is probably precisely what you think it is. Uh, we're writing songs, right? Uh, we believe that uh, songs are kind of the heart of the music industry. Um, we're probably the only department that deals with uh, both melody and lyrics, although every once in a while that gets touched on in some of the other departments here um, but there, there won't be any scoring or, or things like that having said that um, there is a ton of writing for television writing for film and writing for advertisements and commercials because tons of songs are used uh, in these spaces and that part of the curriculum is actually highly developed we have a, a music supervision course almost devoted entirely for example to you know what is netflix looking for right like how do we communicate with music supervisors to get our songs uh placed in the television shows and things like that um so another strong aspect of songwriting and what it means to us is that um it doesn't mean just writing it means production um you know i i found out in the industry and i know many of us who have been out in the industry know that nowadays writing and production has kind of gone like this it's really hard to separate the two, we, we no longer live in the world where a writer or an artist just takes their song to the producer and says, produce this, like that doesn't happen. It's all a uh, creative endeavor together. So there are production courses uh, in the songwriting uh, program. Uh, I can personally vouch that, that they're all you need, but I also encourage you absolutely to explore the other production majors as well. In terms of what type of media, uh, we write for uh, it's everything I just listed. We've got some TV, we've got some film, we've got some radio, we've got some Spotify, some TikTok, wherever you hear song. But that also means shopping malls and elevators and all that fun stuff. Not that you're specifically going to write elevator music, but I think, I think you know what I mean. exposure of different ensembles or so a student write for rhythm section, horn section, vocals, both as a cappella and as a part of bigger groups, but our students also write for strings, uh, string ensembles, big band, and also orchestral ensembles. 
So it's um, the students who pursue the contemporary environmental action major are not only encouraged but required to learn how to write for all reasons. So it's part of our mission to give you opportunities to, to find yourself writing for these ensembles and get there uh, all of this. I would say mostly through original music, but also our, our students always have the opportunity to we encourage people to write their original music, but also sometimes they, they are on set music that was written by somebody else and collaborate with another writer or another composer to arrange the music for particular ensembles. The more advanced the, the students go, the more voice development that we try to and in terms of, um, so for example, ensembles, I'm mostly speaking about the writing side of our department, as, as Jonathan touched on today, writing and production go hand in hand, and that's also a big part of the, our particular major. We have about half of the major in writing and half of the major process of production. Since you're here today, you're interested in writing, so that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, but our students also use technology vertically, and sometimes ensemble doesn't necessarily mean acoustic ensemble. I mean, hybrid ensemble. It's an ensemble of majority live acoustic instruments, but that they have something incorporated in them. And to really be able to match what the industry needs, there's a lot of um, learning in how to make it sound like a real ensemble without having the bandwidth or the budget to really pursue a live ensemble. So we also have a lot of technical jaw and libraries and a lot of work that we do in, in the box to try to emulate these type of scenarios, these type of ensembles that we have in the perfect world being real, but sometimes for timeline or budget purposes, we, we don't have that, that luxury. So we focus on that a lot. So let's call them hybrid ensembles, however we want to. In terms of genres, our idea is the same in alignment with the same mission we try to provide different opportunities to pursue and write different genres. So our students learn jazz, pop, R&B, hip hop, anything from the perspective of we actually have dedicated classes to different styles. So for example, we have writing for hip hop classes, writing for salsa styles, folkloric Latin styles. Um, well, we, we have, you can think of a style and, and then you, we probably have a class that, that focuses on, on that. So that, that's part of our, I would say any, we also do some classical music. Our students also write for string quintet and orchestra. And I would say pop is the most, the, the, the one that our students draw to themselves the most, but I would say it's really diverse in nature. Sorry. <laughs> so um, everything on par said, we do as well. <laughs> There is, there is actually, it's, it's interesting because it's some crossover just across the board. And I will say that sometimes we even have, um, all of us have, uh, except for pro music, I think, but like we all have dual majors that sometimes we'll dip into. And not to mention that we also have minors in which things cross over. Um, obviously, the, you know, the, the word, we, our focus is in jazz, but jazz has come a long way. Um, one of my favorite things that I saw was, um, just sort of, we had a student who was like a prog rock guitarist, is amazing, and his final project in the jazz comp three, which is an extended piece, reflected that. And so, um, again, the fusion of different styles, but you can also go very traditional if you want to. We have a team writing course um, in jazz comp one where you're exploiting like American standards, but then we also have um, a, a new course called Complex Rhythm and Composition, you know, from Tigran to Bubek, and so exploring like Indian music and um, the music of the Middle East. And then so um, these kind of translate into the kind of ensembles that we do. Um, big band, of course, is something that we definitely write for that's very inherent, inherent within that. But we have smaller ensembles that you would do like perhaps with um, two melody voices and rhythm section. Or you have to do a jazz, um, what we call chamber piece, where there's no rhythm section, but it still should be reflective of a jazz style. Uh, we currently have the Jazz Composers Workshop Ensemble, which is a new, unique thing. And uh, what it is is that if you're a, if you are a jazz comp major and you wanted to write for it, you have to register for the course, even if you're not playing in it. 
is the opportunity to learn how to conduct, uh, to run a rehearsal, to have your music play, um, and, and just to even just hear things because uh, the challenge in hearing things through finale or through a DAW is never the same experience as hearing it from people um, playing in front of you. Um, we also write for um, uh, the basic configuration. Some of you may know this um, coming from a range of two, it would be a five horn band. Um, and then after that, into chord scales, we add another trumpet to that. And then we also have, um, as I mentioned, like the big band. And then past that is um, there's a focus, of course, in rhythm section writing. Then there's a focus, of course, in being able to have metodic development and using any sort of combination of melody instruments that you can find. And I've heard things as unique as like, oh, there's you know, a combination of a flute, a violin, and a, like a tenor sax. How do you deal with that uh, sort of a thing? And again, as far as different music genres, uh, we can go from traditional to fusion, to what is modern, to free jazz, to anything um, that, uh, that you're perhaps interested in. And the task of the faculty is just sort of to guide you through orchestration techniques or arranging techniques and also compositional techniques in terms of development and form and so forth. So in professional music, we do not run ensembles. We have one course that's called the GB gig. It's a general business gig course if you want to play corporate events, weddings, things of that nature, where you, where you play the standards and you also learn the, the behind the scenes business. Um, if you do want to have ensemble courses, you can take those courses in other departments and utilize some of them as part of your program. We do work in other genres of music. Uh, we have, of course, uh, K-pop history of practice. We have hip-hop's impact on the global society. So our courses are more about uh, cultural understanding. If you were to take a songwriting course in uh, pop or in hip-hop, I would suggest taking a cultural understanding course so that it pairs up with what you're writing. Um, so you maybe not say the incorrect things. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's that that isn't our our focus necessarily at the time. So in composition, we tend to write for acoustic um, instruments that you find in the symphony orchestra: strings, winds, brass, percussion. Um, we run two ensembles. We run a composer ensemble, which I often teach, which is uh, composers who perform, who are interested in finding extended techniques and all these great sounds you can make in a community kind of environment. And we write music for each other to play and we develop things that way. There's also a composer sinfonietta, which is a, a larger ensemble, which is a conducted ensemble where the students in the group will write music for the group and they will conduct their own piece in a concert in the spring. That's a year long um, project. And in terms of the different styles that we do, it, we're not the classical music department, but we come out of the classical tradition. Classical music ended a few hundred years ago, right? So, um, but we do kind of, uh, you know, tap into a lot of those techniques. These are great techniques. So if you're a fan of 19th century romantic music, we're gonna be teaching you how that music happens, how you can, create it in your own style, how you can analyze it and so forth. And then 20th century is the big uh, region for us in terms of the style. So we have all of the major 20th century musical styles, serialism, minimalism, uh, spectralism. We've got all the isms, you know, uh, microtonal music, uh, chance music, experimental music, all of those styles that were um, brought out in the 20th century is kind of the guts of, of the program, a lot of ways. And then we want you to do something of your own with it. So in songwriting, um, also there are maybe not as much of a focus on ensembles. There is an arranging for songwriters course where 
we go over arranging for your piano player, your bass player, your drums, if you're wanting to go out on tour or something like that. So uh, it kind of ensemble that it would make sense to go out and present your songs with. Otherwise, it's mostly a lot of production work. And I can guarantee you even a lot of the uh, music that you listen to that sounds like it's acoustic and sounds like it's an acoustic folk in the artist, I guarantee you there's some electronic components in there uh, as well. Um, I mean, in my career, we use live drum loops all the time, and people thought they were hearing live drums. And it's, you know, very clearly program. Um, regarding different music genres, uh, we're expanding quite a bit. I would say it was probably your pretty standard um, pop top 40 indie singer songwriter type stuff until the, fa the past few years. Uh, the R&B has expanded quite a bit. I'm really excited that this past year, we hired uh, Kelly Nicole Price, who wrote or was one of the writers on Deja Wu for Beyonce, which is pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. And then we also have with us Michael McCall, who um, it's it's hard to, to communicate the significance of this uh, without knowing a bit about the industry. But Michael McCall is the only uh, faculty member at Berkeley currently signed to a major publishing deal while teaching at the school. He signed with Warner Chapel. Okay. So Michael and Kelly have both quickly become the most popular teachers in our department. And Michael works and he he found his bones through a lot of the R and B artists like Keanu Lede and Tinashe and Queen Benja and uh, and now going into uh, pop as well since he signed with Warner Chapel. So um, so quite an expansion there. We've got um, uh, hip hop classes taught by Cliff Notes who's a, a really amazing a really thoughtful cultural artist here in the city of, uh, of Boston. And um, in addition to that, we have the music theater minor, which I should mention as well. And that's been going on strong for many, many years now. I even audited one of the music theater courses when I was a student here. And um, that's run by Michael Wartowski. And its recent claim to fame is a student by the name of Kion. He just uh, worked with Kasich and Paul, if you know that he did like La La Land and a bunch of uh, other Broadway shows. And he worked with them on that spirited Christmas movie that had like Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell a couple of years ago, whatever. So, um, so we're killing it in short. All right. <laughs>
for us anyway, where that bread and butter is, there's more comprehension. You can be at an instrument, you can write it down and then put it in there as sort of more, to, in, particularly with music notation software, I'm not saying this about other kind of software, but for us, it's like, can you hear it if you're writing it down versus depending on the playback, which, you know, everyone's like, that doesn't sound like a trumpet. I'm like, it's not a trumpet. <laughs> You know, and so um, that's sort of like uh, the approach that we have in some more traditional way. But yeah, if I, you also need to know how to make it more clean and good. The way that I say to a student is, if somebody in like New Zealand and they were going to pay you $10,000 and they don't have, um, you can't email them. This is yeah, a real scenario, right? There's no communication. All you can do is to send them your score and your parts. And within that, they're going to be able to play your music without hearing from you at all. When you get that recording back, it's exactly like that. So that's part of the skills that we want to teach you in music notation. No 10 grand. Sorry, that's, that's probably not going to happen, but that's the idea. We do not in professional music go deep into arranging scoring with music notation software. We do have a computer applications course, but it's taught a little. It's some of the uh, software instruction is based on the expertise of the, the professor at the time. So I would say these are your, your experts in that arena. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think it's similar to jazz comp and CWP composition goes pretty deeply into this. This is this is where we live. We we have you know a lot of directed study in our program, and we sit there and we look at scores. We're not really listening to playback. We're we're looking at scores. We're building our inner ear through scores and really doing ear training and sitting at the piano and so forth. We use Penale and Sibelius as the main programs. Dorico is becoming more popular. Um, we do a number of um, handwritten scores as well. And you know, this is, if you can do it by hand, you got it. You're like, you're set. You're gonna know exactly. You have to tell the computer what's correct. The computer can't tell you what is correct. Any limitation Penale puts on you, it, you still gotta own it. So you gotta know what Penale is getting right and what Penale is not getting right. Um, and then in terms of arranging and scoring, we have a pretty extensive uh, year-long program. We have a course, uh, Instrumentation and Score Prep, and then we have a second course, Scoring for Full Orchestra. Um, these courses just really get you fine-tuning your skills of writing for strings, writing for winds, writing for brass, percussion, and you'll be able to go out there and in whatever context, you'll be able to apply these skills you're going to be arranging for a string band for a TV show or whatever, you've got the skills you need at that point. Uh, so we do go pretty heavily into that. With songwriting, probably what you would expect, but not too much. Uh, again, there's the arranging for songwriters course where we are arranging for the, uh, the bands that we might be performing with. In addition to that, by the time you graduate, yes, it's expected that you know at least how to write out a lead sheet, right? Where you're doing the melody and the chords on top and that sort of thing. Now, having said that, 19 years in the music industry, uh, I never used a lead sheet once my entire time, right? We were all just working off the dog and doing our thing. Um, having said that, um, when I when I started off early, I did some string arranging to make some money. Um, and, and that was very lucrative. And, and most importantly, and I'm sure any, any, anybody up here can tell you, um, it's one thing to be making this music in a DAW or to be playing it on an instrument. Something happens to your brain. You're working a completely different part of it. You're really understanding uh, what it looks like when you're having to write all this stuff down. So uh, even though there may not be as much of a focus on it in, in songwriting, there's sort of a reverence for it because of uh, how important it is to the develop, development of the musical brain. There's many right answers for this one, but not a requirement. Uh, I would just say at, at Berkeley, you will learn how to be a freelance musician, which means you can take any gig you want. <laughs> From our major, you're ready for many different roles. 
on, on the writing side specifically, composer, orchestrator, arranger, string arrangement, working on somebody else's music and, and give depth and, and sound and, and form. Um, but also from the production side, you enter a studio as a producer, as the lead. In our department, we, we aim to train ourselves to become leaders in the production environment. For example, in a recording studio, you will be there as a leader, writing, producer type of, if you think of Quincy Jones and, and people, great like that, and they can write and produce and see uh, Colombians and Bolivians and the sort of that you know, that would be great your students. Having said that, you can take on any, literally any role. You can also help someone, particularly, and because we have different kinds of strengths on the technical side, with libraries, with mixing, with uh, production tools, but also copying, doing parts, notation software. So there's really, really lots of things. Of course, uh, you can dream as big as you want. You can literally do anything um, from bigger to, to small roles as per project need, right? You'll be able to work in a project where you can do everything in the project. You're the leader, you will do everything. But depending on the timeline, the budget, the need, the, the media, the, the purpose, you can take on different roles on a different project based on creativity. That's what I think it makes us versatile. <laughs> that would be my word, versatile. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to lay claim to the Quincy Jones thing. Uh, when he was at Berkeley for a uh, minute. Um, and so, the, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell a story because I think it's a great story. But apparently, Quincy Jones would go to the project bands. And I think at the time, they were like being played by faculty. And, and he would write a tune a week, like a charter week, you know. And so, um, but going back to terms of, you know, roles from our major, um, jazz, I think that word jazz is uh, really interesting. I think though, with everything that we give the majors, they have a lot of flexibility because and I am gonna brag because our majors would go out there and they can do for a large variety of popular styles, but to get to really write something like someone's like, okay, I need, for example, this jazz cue this movie and not everybody's going to be able to have that skill and get their repertoire or understand like okay what exactly they need like this big band hit of this you know like this like short like 30 second thing and having being trained in sort of this genre that sort of really helps i have some wonderful alum right now like uh that are working um, for marvel you know martin they're doing like post-production i met with them actually it was really funny but like it was before loki came out and they're like, yeah, I, you know, I finish it up. I'm like, do you know the stuff? What happens? He's like, I know it all. So, uh, <laughs> but again, I, I feel like it gives us the like, gives the student the flexibility uh, because we do um, all sorts of um, arranging and orchestration techniques. Again, you can become a composer's assistant. We currently have an intern working with Daspers who is creating. Um, like um, charts of uh, music charts for different types of levels of schools. Like for example, you have a middle school that doesn't have a full range. Like so, he's creating charts for like French horn and bassoon and uh, you know flute, but they're able to play jazz. And this is a current intern that's right going on right now. It's also helping to provide equity among the schools public school system. Uh, again, also you would also be able to learn how to um, work within the American. Um, the U.S. There are tons of high school, middle school, um, even elementary school programs that run jazz programs and are always looking for new material, or even looking for existing material that um, um, that they cannot that do not have the time to sort of put it for the level that's needed. So that's another thing that can happen. And then, like as Amparo also said, like copy work, um, that's a huge one, definitely. And sometimes some people are looking for. Uh, existing music that's not been digitized um, and needs to become digitized so then it's to be recopied um, and that sort of a thing but I, I feel like with this major that it has allowed so many of our alum to be out there in various situations not just jazz for our students uh, we are focusing we're training students to work between industries, between genres, and to have the understanding of how to pivot, how to build community, how to network. So for instance, if I'm a songwriter, 
who am I writing for? For what purpose? How do I build community around my writing? What is my long-term goal with my writing? What are the po- what are the job possibilities that I could develop through my writing? And what what else might I need to learn from another area of the college or by experience having experience off campus? So it's about getting you to think about the big picture of how does all of this writing, how does all this composition live into my long-term goal? Okay, in composition, uh, you're being trained to be a composer. In, you know, the, the instrumental combinations that we spoke about and those permutations, we also have the conducting minor. So a lot of our composition majors do the conducting minor, also screen scoring majors and so forth, CWP majors, where they're really combining with composition with conducting. So you can jump into a composer role, but also arranger, orchestrator, conductor, musical director, um, those types of positions. In addition, composition, as you probably know, is it's one of the traditional tracks in music training. Um, And so you'll find composition programs all over the country, right? And a lot of them feed into graduate programs. So a number of our students go into graduate programs, master's programs, BMA or PhD programs in composition. Um, And that leads into a career of kind of either creating your own new music ensemble or composing for, um, you know, orchestras and chamber music, opera and so forth. Um, And then on top of that composition, since they're, they're really fundamental skills that can be applied to any different styles, our composition majors end up in musicology. They, you know, we have a year long analysis uh, course. So some of them end up into non composer based uh, academic programs, as well as, um, you know, anything from working in libraries or working for orchestras or working uh, inside the industry. So the roles that students are being trained for in songwriting, um, we're excited to announce that basically in the past year or so, we've launched uh, five separate focuses that you can focus in on uh, in the songwriting major. This is new just as the, as the, as of the past couple of years or so, we've finally got it all, all together and worked out. And it's based on, it's built from um, the songwriting department hiring a few of us uh, who came from the industry and came back and said, hey, this is what's going on in studios right now. These are the different roles that you could be playing or the different genres you can write for. And so uh, those five are uh, the top line songwriter. Hey, do you know what the top line is? Maybe not. Uh, the, the, the very, very short version is that you've got the team in the studio working on the track, on the harmonic stuff and the drums and all that stuff. And you got the other team in the studio working on the melody and lyrics, right, that the vocalist is going to be responsible for. So we call that top line songwriting. So we got the top line songwriter, uh, the songwriter performer, that's going to be your Taylor Swift, your Ed Sheeran, your John Mayers, okay? You've got the songwriter producer, that's going to be your Max Martin, your Dr. Luke, your Trey, your Timbaland, your Imogen Heap, okay? Do we have songwriter for musical theater, and then we have songwriter for sync, and sync, uh, from now on, whenever you hear that word, either here at Berkeley or out in the world, sync means television, film, advertising, commercial. So oh, I'm writing this for sync. That means that you're writing for some kind of visual media. Okay. So those are our uh, five roles. The only other thing to say maybe is that Berkeley does have a strong tradition with top line songwriters. Uh, Claude Kelly, he wrote uh, Party in the USA for Miley Cyrus and uh, uh, Grenade for Bruno Mars. We have Makiba Riddick, who did Rude Boy for Rihanna. We have uh, Amy Allen, who wrote for Halsey. And we have Justin Tranter, who uh, wrote Centuries for Fall Out Boy, Believer for Imagine Dragons, Hands to Myself by Selena Gomez. And he was just nominated for uh, Songwriter of the Year uh, this year, the Grammys. So, uh, very strong tradition. to ensure success in contemporary writing and production, we need, need our students, first of all, to be the requirements to the care, which are 
not impossible, but strong challenging. But if you know in advance, you know what to apply your your focus on. We need solid skills in music technology, harmony too, and arranging. That's it. It's not too bad. If you demonstrate high grades in your class um, in these courses, then basically you meet the requirements. You have to have an advising meeting within the department, either with the assistant chair, Yoshida Kayama, or a coordinator to advise it. And the declaration process itself, you fill a form online. Yay! Yes. <laughs> this, this is the change. So you just fill out the form and you express your interest in conducting the production. So we, at the same time, in parallel, you have to connect with us. We make sure that you meet the requirements and we have a nice discussion with you. Then you should be all set. So nothing, nothing special. Just apply yourself and that's it. Um, as I mentioned, it as jazz composition is actually one of the more original majors at Berkeley. And um, and so the process is actually pretty simple for us. Um, so um, they declare before their third semester church, right? Right before your third semester tra traditionally. And so by that point, you already, um, depending on where you are, have already done a lot of the core. So, uh, just some things that are required um, of jazz comms. You do have to take, not when you declare, but you, the plan for it is that you do have to take a range of two. Um, if you're a not a piano um, principal, you're going to have to take the keyboards class, but you can't take those until you declare. Um, and eventually, you just want to look at the grid because if you can think ahead, uh, a lot of our courses, if you meet the prerequisites, you don't have to be a major. Uh, and so, so you can, in that sense, get ahead before you declare. Uh, so it, depend, it depends on where you ended up um, with your first semester and the second semester and the progress. But if you decide to go in that track, you should look at the grid and the requirements. Um, the process, as I far said, is not as a form. You think there was one. Uh, so we really like this process. Um, and uh, it will be, you know, and it will get approved. And, um, but of course, also to reach out to our department, um, if you, if particularly when we would love to help you with the grid and to sort of make suggestions like this, is better you take this course concurrent with this course. If you take these other two courses, um, then it's going to be like heavy load. So those are some things we also um, can personalize. For. So our declaration process is a bit. Uh, Longer, a little more detail, we have to make sure that first that you can find the declaration steps on our page uh, on berkeley.edu. And the steps include meeting with your uh, success advisor, kind of getting a heads up about the process, or checking in with our department coordinator by emailing promusic at berkeley.edu. And what we do is a course map. So every one of our students have to map out exactly the courses that they plan to take over the course of their uh, academic time here at Berkeley. And you plot those courses in each semester. So for instance, if you plan to go to Valencia, we need to know that in your sixth semester, you'll be in Valencia. Here are the courses that are available while you're in Valencia, either on campus or online. And uh, we have a sequence of courses that are required in the last three semesters. So you have to plot those out. You have to figure out how to balance between your liberal arts requirements, your core requirements, and your uh, degree program to make sure that you don't get into your eighth semester and you have all liberal arts classes remaining. So we try to work with you to make sure that you have some sort of balance. Um, and once you're once your course map is approved, and, and the course map is it's not static. So if you said I wanted to take uh, lyric writing one, um, but actually now that I've taken songwriting one, I want to take some other course. Um, you can swap those out as long as they're the same uh, credit amount. So once your course map is approved, then you are sent to a form that you fill out and then it comes to me and I send my approval. I I think we have to talk about what the original 
department and But if you look at the history of the school, it started off with um, to declare composition, it's very easy. You meet with your success advisor, and then you declare the major. Um, that's it. There are a few things in composition that are a little different. Um, we we ask you to take solfege um, one and two instead of your training three and four. But if you have already taken your training three and four, before declaring, we will accept that so you don't have to take extra your training classes. And we also have a different history requirement, general music history one and two, instead of the traditional Berkeley um, history 201. Uh, declaration for songwriting is similar to CWP, actually. So you're going to fill out the form, you're going to come in and have a short little chat with us while we just kind of walk you through the major. Uh, and then after that, uh, either the chair or I approve, and that's it. Uh, the only caveat might be that you can declare any time with salary. We don't have a, a window of time in which you have to declare. You can declare any time you want. Dr. Mendoza, why production? Because it includes the word production or both parts of the major is production. But I will say it's not either or. They're really intimately aligned, right? The, we look at technology tools as a way of improve our writing. So we use the old technology, DAW, software, spaces, hardware. We all use all of that to help make you a better writer and to train you to be a writer. So our students use, there's a couple of things I need to mention here. There are tools that they have. So in order to major in contemporary art and production, students are required to purchase what we call a technology bundle for the program, which includes additional tools, mostly software, but software and hardware that students need to have in order to succeed, because we also want it to be so sufficient, right? For giving some spaces, and yes, students have access to it based on the particular class that they're taking and the project that they're taking. But we also want to make sure that you have the stuff you need. So in addition to all of the software that everybody at Berkeley has, we look for a few extra libraries and programs and, and mixing and production tools. So we, when you declare the major, you also have to buy additional software and get a microphone and inter an interface with four inputs, uh, MIDI keyboard, good listening environment, that is good speakers, good headphones, and um, some production tools. The idea is that we don't, we cannot envision good writing without extensive use of logic, pro tools, coding tools, microphones. So this is true because we require students to record the performance. Right? So whenever they they compose a major piece of music or they make an album, be part of that in entails. If it's meant, if it's written and meant to be for a, a real ensemble like theirs, then and try to provide those opportunities. So here I have to make a distinction between what happens with our production-oriented courses. We, for those production-oriented courses, we go into studio and record them. Why? Because our students are the producer in the in the in the studio environment. So our, our student goes to a studio as a writer producer, aka the leader of this. Also, we provide. Uh, for particular projects uh, with streams, with rhythm section, and, and mostly to focus on production, we provide an opportunity for our students. But the courses in the writing side, which is what we're talking mostly here, what we do is sort of like a reading session, right? Our students, we provide the ensemble because often these are all written for the same type of ensemble. Let's say the entire class writes for a big band, or the entire class writes for an orchestra. So the, the faculty in the department, they make sure that we, we work really hard on this to put together a small ensemble that can play those projects. Right? And the, the concept of this is to, it's more of a reading session. So we, we hear, the idea is to give you the, uh, the ability to hear what you wrote and sort of improve and, and check in how your problem is, whether what you have in your head, how do you put that into your score and part, which is super important, something we talked about before, and how does it really translate when all the people play? 
right? And that's the best way to learn how to write for real people, to start them, read what you wrote and see if it's really what you want to find or not. So that's um, how much we record. We do record a lot. Um, a lot of our projects can be recorded or at least read. So we, we just record the reading section, which might not be an amazing take, but we record everything that gets read. And in terms of quality, I would say most of the time we use students. That way we can provide performing students. Those students who want to learn how to record also the ability to be at the studio. Occasionally we are able to bring up student and players, but on a very limited basis. So the quality usually depends. Earlier projects, it's mostly we work with students. And further, more advanced writing, we try to provide players that can read a little bit better because all of this happens in that play reading situation. We also have projects with, with the focus of some of the projects and that the students often have the ability to produce the piece themselves. So they are basically on their own. They have to the players and make the whole production by themselves. So it just, there's a big range of different scenarios because that's precisely we were hoping that you learn from what all of these situations can bring and what your role is and what the uh, department in this case or your teacher can provide. Uh, provide necessary recording spaces, we try to ensure that uh, for the courses it's, uh, it's a good project opportunity. So depending on the project, we make sure that we get in the right, the right room or the right scenario. And then there is very limited access to the spaces that we have when we're not using them for classes or for recording sessions. The students get to use them for project time, depending on, let's say you're taking a particular course that it has attached to a particular project. I work very, this is a really difficult puzzle that we work on and we make sure that we allow the students some little bit of time based on the course and the project that they're doing so they can access the space and, and also help for the final branches. Often we will happen that you will get a recording file from a session and then you will go on and mix it by yourself. So you will give your, you have access to a room so you can help mix. And often many students, what they do is that they also have the ability to mix at home and we they have the, the environment. So that's a variety of situations as you can see. It's hard to explain. I mean, there's a lot of different scenarios that we fill you in. So that's, that's the goal. You, you can you learn how to navigate based on what you can have in, in, in every particular case. Yeah, sorry, again, I think we're wrong. For our major in terms of production, uh, we don't have a requirement per se. So any sort of general core requirements in terms of technology, um, there is you know bandwidth perhaps with electives. Uh, but nowadays, as Jonathan would say, is that you, you almost, if you're going to be out there as an artist, you have to have an aspect of production. And I would say that all of our students, especially since the pandemic, have the ability to track, um, you know, what are you doing it through logic and some of them do it in the high level through Pro Tools and come up with some really, really effective demos, if you will. Um, so in that sense, we're seeing that side of production um, applying there um, and and some of them have some really good basic skills in terms of mixing and coming up with the product uh, we pretty much require the students to record um, almost um, all of their projects uh, because we're dealing with a lot of um, live acoustic instruments and also instruments that you would probably find traditionally in jazz uh, which we have at the school in terms of what we provide um, on the core level or at the basic level, we're going to use five horn bands or the big band. Um, and then past that, if you have your own type of ensemble, then you will, you will probably have to, you'll take that on yourself. Uh, as far as um, uh, what currently exists, we have our Ken Pollock Visiting Artists um, residency in which an ensemble is built into that. This year we have Miguel Dinan. Uh, and he's great, just uh, won his first Grammy after multiple uh, nominations. And so he has an ensemble. He also works with them in terms of master classes and one on ones and that sort of a thing. We have the Jazz Composers Workshop Orchestra that I mentioned before. And so while we also get to work with uh, visiting artists, we have um, Ingrid Jensen who's going to be playing with us, and, and the students get to compose for them, and then they'll get to perform. And David Friend, and they'll be recording um, with that. 
uh, we also are, once we get past that concert and the other one we just recently have, we get an engineer and have pieces read through. And we just try to just get these readings recorded. Um, and we're lucky enough to have B41, which is a great room for that. The students also, in your final portfolio, you should have at least four performed pieces. And you have the opportunity to have a senior recital, your senior portfolio recital. You will put your ensemble together because it depends on what you want to, to have. But the opportunity is there once you get that recital date, you're given like 10 hours of rehearsal that you'll sign up for in order to prepare for that. Um, and, and, and as I met, mentioned before, you know, it's just sort of like, um, it's a chance to be able to hear your music as much as possible. And I also find that um, sometimes some students even are able to sign up for recitals earlier and then they take their, what they've written in their classes and to do it there um, as well. So um, we try as much as possible as, you know, the, the space and the time right now is not necessarily um, at the highest level, but we do what we can and we're at least happy that we're able to provide a few performance opportunities um, for our students. All professional music students are required to take at least one music production course. Um, and that's no matter what track choices you have, students are able to do the recording and production like as part of their major and they're also able to do uh, music production track well, that has a little bit more variety to it. Um, as far as recording, mostly most of the recording that's done in our department is through our record label. We have a label called Berkeley Revelation Records. We put out a, a, a compilation every year, but we also work with individual students to help them um, put out single releases throughout the year. So go to Berkeley Revelation Records on Instagram or berkeleyrevelationrecords.com and you hear some of those. And the recordings, since we, we haven't been able to ever get access to studios on campus, we record off-site. Uh, for composition, since it's mostly focused on acoustic instruments, um, production we we help the the majors as much as possible to get recordings of their pieces and there are a number of ways that students get their pieces read or performed and or recorded we do a number of concerts in our recording in our um, performance halls we have um, every semester a number of our students have their pieces read by the bcso which is also recorded this is a reading it's not a concert but uh, it's a great opportunity. We also have visiting artists that come in and we professionally record those. So a string quartet in the fall, which is open to all writing majors in the division, um, as well as in the spring, the composition department brings in a visiting artist, um, a local new music ensemble. And usually the, the scores that comp majors write are kind of, you know, pretty challenging to play. So. Uh, bringing in professional musicians whenever we can is is ideal. Of course, a lot of times there's project bands that get recorded for our contemporary techniques classes and um, other students related events um, that, that um, most of our pieces are recorded in concert situation let's say, or reading situation. In terms of how much production is related to songwriting the major, you heard me kind of speak to that before. It's um, obviously very, very integrated. We have a lot of uh, production courses beyond just the two that we require all the songwriting students to take. We have an advanced skills for the songwriter producer. We have vocal production for songwriters. We have a new course called uh, Multi-DAW for the songwriters, which is based on, again, what's happening out in the real world, a lot of records now are starting out where the music's being created in Cubase or Logic or Ableton Live or FL Studio. And then if it's hip hop, pop or R&B, quite often the beat is getting programmed in FL Studio. And then you'll do your uh, your final vocals and the mix engineering usually works uh, as well in Pro Tools, okay? So uh, a lot of production 
uh, in terms of the way it's integrated with songwriting. Uh, students do record in R major, they record all the time. Uh, they record very often <laughs> in answer to the question. Uh, I would probably say within, um, by the time you're at songwriting two, right, the, the, the second level course, you're getting into um, to turning in recordings. And uh, in terms of recording quality, about the time you get halfway through, um, we're talking what well, back in the day we used to say uh, is radio ready, right? It's like, it's got to sound like it's ready to go and it's ready to be released. Um, we don't, maybe about halfway through again, we're no longer accepting voice memos <laughs> done on your phone. A lot of people do, believe me. Um, having said that, even if there's something fully produced, <laughs> So um, with um, having said that, even if you're doing something fully produced with crazy drums and strings and this and that and all kinds of fun stuff and synths, um, that's great. But quite often, if you're turning in something that's just a really, really quality recording of a vocal and a guitar, um, that can sell it just, I mean, you listen to Tracy Chapman's original demos of Fast Car, right? And I don't mean the Luke Holmes version, I mean Tracy Chapman. And, um, and those sound like records ready to release like that, right? Um, so it's all, about, it's all about quality with us, but having said that, that doesn't mean you have to have all kinds of stuff uh, in the recording, okay? Um, and yes, we provide studio space. Uh, similar to CWP, there are places you can book uh, with us. Um, all studio time at Berkeley is, um, is through specific projects tied to specific courses. So that's how you will uh, gain studios, regardless of which major you choose, actually.